Hi. Good afternoon. Good. This works. So, thank you for coming. I'm going to present to you the uh, case study of Unido Public Website, which we recently revamped and did a lot of technical changes in the backend. And we're talking about managing the uncertainties and delivering value. Through this project and through the experience, I would like to share um, to you my talk. So established in 19, uh, 1966, the UNIDO uh, organization is a specialized agency of the United Nations that promotes industrial development. <clears throat> Some of the key areas that they focus on is industrial policy, trade capacity management, green industry, energy, and agribusiness. Its ultimate goal is to promote inclusive and sustainable industrial development that contributes to the achievement of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Now, in December 2021, Dr. Gerd Muller of Germany took the helm of UNIDO as the Director General. His vision for UNIDO is to provide concrete and practical solutions to pressing global challenges like sustainability, climate change, and hunger. As he set out to bring his vision to life, he has introduced a major restructuring in the organization and has prioritized digital transformation to better deliver UNIDO's mandate. My name is Pavan Malji, and I work at UNIDO as the Web Application Management Officer, W-A-M-O. Luckily, it doesn't spell WACO. My team and I develop, manage, and support the web applications portfolio under the central IT. I wear several hats on my job, including developer, technical lead, project manager, team lead, support engineer, and my responsibilities include resource management, vendor evaluation, technical advisor. Some Germans might realize the word Mathian for Alice. So yeah, have to wear all those hats. So today, I'm going to share with you my journey of the UNIDO's public website revamp project where I wore most of these hats. I will be touching the technical aspects of this project in brief, but my main focus is to share the lessons learned working on the project on a tight budget, tight schedule, fluid requirements, while making almost no compromise on the quality and maintainability and scalability and all the abilities that we generally talk to to our clients. I believe this talk has something for everyone in this, uh, working in design, development, and support of IT. It is most relatable to those who wear several hats in their organizations, have several roles and responsibilities on a project without clear separation. I hope to share with you a few lessons that I have learned during this project that may help you better navigate your next challenge. So, the business case, like all projects start with. It has been determined by the Office of the Director General that the current UNIDO public website does not accurately reflect the priorities, work, and achievement of the organization. It is also in serious need of visual upgrade to a more modern and vibrant look. Very innocent two sentences. This formed the basis of the project. As the VAMO of UNIDO IT, I was given this mandate by the IT department chief. This is also an opportunity for IT to demonstrate that they fully embrace the new mantra, do more with less. In addition, we were tasked with content restructuring and cleanup to ensure that the messaging of, on the new website was consistent and it was in line with the new direction of the organization. This was harder than I thought, as 
the organization was going, undergoing restructuring as well, which meant content owners were changing. So, just a little background. The Unido public website was migrated to Drupal almost six, seven years ago. As with any product, we had accumulated a large amount of technical debt over the years. And it was getting harder for us to build and deliver new features, fix bugs, keep Drupal core patched, etc. We also had some critical features like automated content import that had been architected in a, uh, in a way that resulted in severe errors on the live website. The infrastructure was monolithic, and naturally it was difficult to keep it patched and secured. Not to forget that some of our content authors had gotten very creative and were starting to write custom HTMLs in their little text boxes using inline images, inline documents, and of course, because of the poor access control and lack of features, who could blame them? So, as me and my team were responsible for the operation, are responsible for the operations and support of the, of both the application and the infrastructure of the web application, I decided to expand the business case to include re-architect and modernize the content management service, powering the Unido public website in order to enable faster feature deliveries, quick turnaround on patches, a cloud-ready infrastructure, and a consistent content creation experience. Talk about shooting yourself in the foot. Immediately, we went from do more with less to do a lot more with less. Not to forget, the less not only applied to budget and resources, but also to the time. At the beginning, we were given an extremely tight deadline of four months. But as the saying goes, fast, good, cheap. Pick any two. Spoiler alert, we got an extension. No money, though. So, management versus IT requirement understanding. So you saw the two um, business cases. Of course, there were discrepancies in understanding the, the scope, the effort, and the time. As you might have guessed, the complexity and scope of the project was perceived very differently by the management and the IT. To explain the difference, let's consider an old car has been brought to the garage. The higher management thinks, eh, it needs a little bit of cleanup and maybe a paint job. The delivery head is thinking, OK, clean up, paint job, but maybe a little tune up as well. The IT implementation team knows that they have to just build a brand new car while keeping the old one running. So due to this, there was an obvious difference in perception of effort, time, and cost. The perceived scope by the management, new design, content cleanup, and optional few, few new features. The actual scope. Whew. New design, content cleanup, atomic design-based templating, content architecture, backend restructuring, standardizing and simplifying content authoring, on-demand content synchronization for, from the current system to the new system, pay off the technical debt, shake the tree and remove the dead weight, core and uh, module upgrades, Docker-based local and in, uh, production environments, automated build and deploy, better monitoring, documentation and retraining. And the list is not over. So. The core of the topic, the uncertainties. You see on the slide, I've mentioned the highlights. I'll go through them in brief. With the kind of scope we had, there were several of them. I'm just mentioning a few of them. Design approval. The new modern design had to be approved by the big guy himself, the director general. What design would get his approval? Budget constraint. A small budget was available for design work. Actually, we redirected it to design work because there was nothing else we could do about it. Inexperienced content owners. Here we are talking about the communications uh, team who, who are not well versed with delivering web-based content management. Sorry, doing web-based content management. And to be fair, there was only one resource who was a consultant, and she did her best. Learning curve and scope creep. 
I wanted to introduce Docker-based uh, local development as well as production environment. I also knew that developing a templating system using atomic design would add great value in the future. Now, is it the right choice given the learning curve and the tight budget and schedule? I was mooting. Technical debt. The technical debt that we had accumulated over the five, last five years meant we had to abandon the entire code base. Now, is it worth trying to do this on a tight schedule? Small team? Well, compared to 2017 migration, where we had about six developers, about four content editors, and an army of interns, well, we were, we were thin on the project this time. But we, we were up for the challenge. So the project officially kicked off in the middle of August 2022, and the release was set for somewhere around mid-January. The first thing was to get the design approval. Now, here we had to present at least two different options to our director general to make sure he had a choice. And one thing we did was research what he had liked in the past. And we, we, we came to know about a couple of projects that uh, he, um, in his former roles, had commissioned and liked. So we decided to go with the design company that had done these designs. And of course, there were internal sources helping us, uh, you know, trying to, let's say, find out what he may like. Now, just to give you a context, it's hard to get the time of a director general to sit down with you to tell you what he exactly likes. He'll tell you what's wrong with your designs. So, but doing this take, took time, which means, well, by the time the designs were finalized and approved, it was mid of November. Now remember, mid of January, we want to go live. Budget utilization, well, we, we had to put in all of the, the available budget into uh, into the design, uh, uh, into paying the design vendor, but we also managed to get the storybook implementation in place, not done, implementation in place, and we could start some development by the early December. But site building and backend changes. I knew we had a lot of adjustments to do in the existing content types, media types, paragraphs, views, etc., to make the optimal use of the implementation. Uh, of the atomic design. At this time, I was determined to avoid any writing of any custom code, if possible, to access field values. Drupal provides a great way to do so with view modes, display modes, and template naming conventions. Go with the flow. And as we all know, as Drupal developers, the development experience is really slow. A Drupal developer must have the patience of a Zen master. Drush CR. Okay. <laughs> Console has returned. Content cleanup and content architecture. Of course, we had to uh, use our content, uh, our Google Analytics data to, to try and find a bulk way to clean up everything. We made mistakes. We took some bold decisions. Now we are being asked to revert back certain changes, but that was um, the best thing we could do at the time. It's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. So we went with a light website. It's getting heavier by the day. Development and release process. Um, we host our own uh, GitLab, and um, we, we introduced our CI CD pipelines, modified it for, for Docker based build and release process. Um, now to mind you, this is the same team. It's just those two guys again changing their hats and doing the same thing. And saying, okay, server now. No, the developer wants this. No, I want that. Storybook and atomic design. 
Now, this was the hardest one to keep up with, because if you read up on Storybook, they always go like, if you have a small team, don't do it. You might, you'll, you'll have a lot of overhead. But initially, it was dragging the implementation, but I knew it would pay off. The Storybook component now serves, serves as a great catalog for developers and content editors. Because before that, we used to always get support calls saying, hey, is this possible? Can we do this? Can we do that? Now it's more like, look at the documentation. It's, it's right there. If there is a component on there, you can use it, and you can create your pages using all those Lego pieces. But the biggest advantage for IT is now we can take the request, change requests, or requests for features that come in from our internal clients and say, hmm, you have an idea. Good. Talk to the vendor and let them implement your design as per your heart's content. And we'll do the backend changes once you are done with that. Because that takes the most time. Previously, we had, we had this um, you know, a mixture, spaghetti of code and design coming together. So it was hard to, to, to estimate these things and charge them properly or give them a, a, a timeline as well. Technical debt, as I mentioned, it was, it was um, clear that we had accumulated a lot. A number of hours we spent um, on the support and workarounds was increasing. The backlog of requested changes was increasing. The inline HTML hacks were increasing. And the overall confidence on the entire application was on the decline. So this is the old side, by the way, not talking about the new side. We wanted to capitalize on this project so that to, to make things better. So we were using uh, custom code import, uh, custom code for content import. No brainer. We replaced it with feed importers. Of course, the things that we didn't like, we just got rid of them. Uh, refactored and uh, streamlined our paragraphs for a better content editing experience. We unified the different versions of map visualizations that we had. We standardized how media items uh, could be embedded or used. We removed all unused modules, and especially the custom modules, and improved the user experience on handheld devices. The small team, again, uh, like I mentioned, uh, very small, sorry. Uh, we just had to work with it. Luckily, our chief had given us the flexibility, uh, and my supervisors were, were shielding uh, me and my team from other tasks as much as possible. This allowed us to concentrate fully uh, on the project. So the working hours were long, weekends included, but it still felt like time was flying due to the excitement and the drive to deliver. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Yes, we had to work through the Christmas and the New Year. As the timeline was too short, and we had exploded the scope ourselves, my team and I worked through Christmas and New Year. It wasn't easy, but I knew it would pay off over the next five years, many folds. I do not recommend sacrificing your personal and family life. But sometimes, we all want to be the hero that saves the day. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough. <laughs> we still weren't ready for the mid-January launch. I informed my um, IT chief about the status and asked for a New Year's present. And a gift I got. More time. <laughs> so. Clear and timely communication was one of the major factors for the success of this project. But due to some last minute uh, higher management content review and changes that they wanted, which goes on forever, and with some good negotiation by our chief with the higher management, we managed to get eight more weeks. Now I was fully confident that we will be able to meet the deadline with the promised features uh, of the first release, of course, uh, including the content update and creation. The big release. We finally went live on the 15th of March. Given this was a soft launch, we just changed the DNS, and nobody realized that we changed until the newsletter came out. 
Yeah? Now, that's, it's official only when the newsletter comes out. <laughs> so, we managed to deliver a fully functioning, re-architected, robust, performant website with the new look and feel, which was extremely well received by the Director General and by the wider user community of Unido. Now, there was relatively, well, let me put that in air quotes, big backlog of nice to have components, which we are still working on. But on that day, we decided to celebrate before moving on to our next adventure. So what value did we, we deliver to our, through our efforts? The business value, the rejuvenated corporate identity of Unido helped to emphasize the new direction, priorities, and energy in the organization. Of course, it made the big man happy, so that's an added advantage. It makes it a lot easier for our member states and public users to explore content. It allows our content editors to easily create and maintain content in a consistent manner. And the tagging system that, uh, now allows uh, content to, to show up contextually, which keeps our audiences engaged. Given these features were there, or have always been there, but now the new structure enforces it. And some of the uh, technical bits I've already touched upon. Storybook integration, I cannot uh, recommend enough. Uh, if you, a atomic design-based system, because it allows us now to reuse these components across technologies as well, you know. Um, working with the Drupal's render engine, don't forget your basics. Standardized content creation, feed-based imports, Docker-based local and production environment, faster builds and releases um, using uh, GitLab CI CD. And this project now forms as a starter code for all of our Drupal-based projects. Lessons learned. Management. Know your customer. KYC. Hate when you get those calls. Um, the better you know your customer, the easier it is for you to understand their expectations. Learning about, a, uh, about our Director General's preferences through past projects helped us quickly secure his approval. Be honest about you and your team's strengths and weaknesses. Clearly communicating that our team lacked the UI design skills at the very beginning helped us optimally utilize the limited budget that we had. Trust your team to deliver. <clears throat> My direct supervisor, Mr. Jiasu, and our IT chief, Mr. Jason Slater, trusted the project manager, trusted the team, and supported them even though they did not see a tangible or visible progress for a long time. They gave us their unwavering support and greatly contributed in the stakeholder management. Right decisions are usually the harder choice. This one might be relative, but I'm sure most of you have stood on the crossroads of quick and dirty versus slow and clean. I can bet that 90% of the cases, the quick and dirty has come back to haunt you. And the 10% is waiting for the right time to ruin your Christmas. Weigh your options. The harder choice is very likely the right one. Change the old ways, no matter how comfortable. Drupal, like any other software, is a tool. If used incorrectly, will become a hindrance in delivering value. Watching your first YouTube video and just jumping into the implementation because you found a cool module, don't do that. Do your research. The open source community in general, and Drupal community in particular, provides us solutions that streamline and simplify the development process of content management systems. 
making uncomfortable changes often leads to better things. And finally, future-proof your solutions. This is probably on the minds of most of us developers, to make things future-proof. In our case, we tried to solve the things that were problematic in the previous version and plan to capitalize the technical solutions we were putting in place to better manage our change management processes. Being able to deliver new features to our internal clients and being able to charge them accurately has greatly improved our services. Future proof, talking about future proof without talking about AI and machine learning. Yay. So, finally, work life balance. I thoroughly enjoyed working on Unido public website project, which provided an incredible technical challenge spanning Drupal development to stakeholder management, all the scuff in between to DevOps. This endeavor allowed me to apply my knowledge and experience across the entire project lifecycle, including inception, finance, strategic decisions, stakeholder and vendor management, resource allocation, scoping, quality assurance, delivery, and user acceptance. Being part of a small, trusting team pushed me to embrace challenges and surpass what I initially believed was possible. On a final note regarding physical and mental health, as developers, we often become engrossed in our workstations, occasionally neglecting our own well-being. We have fallen into the, into the stereotypical developer pattern at some point, fueled by caffeine, energy drinks, unhealthy snacks, sleep deprivation, and insufficient physical activity. Unfortunately, this project was no exception. However, the most significant and evident lesson I have learned, I would like to share with you, is the importance of self-care, particularly during demanding periods. We are fortunate to have a profession we love. And the best way to ensure longevity in doing what we love is taking care of our bodies and minds. Remember, it's not a marathon. Sorry, it is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Uncertainties will always arise, but true value can only be delivered when we prioritize our own well-being. I would like to acknowledge some people, Thomas Renner and Web Shapers, for, for extending the invitation, and uh, the Drupal Dev uh, Developer Days community as well my supervisor, Jia Zhu, and uh, our chief, uh, Mr. Jason Slater. My team, as you can see, strong, small but strong. Uh, Ivana Butnik, Bhargavi Nalam, and Parvati Samkonapala, AKA PK. Um, Ms. Esther Gomez, who was our counterpart for this project for, you know, uh, from the UNIDO communications team, and Frau Dr. Mariela Malji, my better half, for supporting me through the work, through the crazy working schedule during this time. Thank you. So thank you, and. Uh, I, I'm going to give a bit uh, of introduction for my question, uh, if I can, uh, because uh, I am working for a Czech environmental NGO. And as you mentioned, uh, also my job also involves uh, cooperation with a communications team. So we are the IT guys, and they are responsible for the communication side of things. Yes. And uh, from that, uh, often arises a bit of conflict uh, around the, the goals of the web projects. And uh, especially I would like to ask about uh, if you were able to uh, include some sort of, you know, uh, more sustainable uh, aspects of uh, web design uh, to the project. Because uh, my experience is that uh, communication people uh, often like uh, things like moving images, 
videos on the background and so on. So uh, my question is, uh, is uh, that whether uh, you also try to discuss these topics yeah. with, the, with your communications team and what was the result? Thank you. So if I get your question correctly, uh, you're talking about how best you, uh, to improve the, the, the collaboration between the communications team and the IT team, correct? Uh, by, by making sure what they are asking for is delivered uh, in the way they want uh, it to be delivered. Great, great biggest challenge because the priorities are different, right? We, uh, from the IT perspective, we are looking at sustaining the, the, the status quo, making sure key things keep running, and of course, uh, communications, um, well, some, of, some part of their uh, work involves change, bringing change, good. Um, I kept banging on the, on the um, uh, term um, atomic design and using storybook. And, um, uh, and, and I was hoping I could um, maybe quickly um, show you something. If, uh, although, uh, we do have 15 minutes. Um, we can, uh, if not possible now, I can share with you later. But basically what it has allowed us to do is uh, take their requirements. If, let's say they want to introduce um, a new carousel. Of, uh, of news and stories and whatnot. So we say, okay, draw it, design it, and uh, let's prototype it in Figma and what, what, what have you, uh, and then talk about the data flow. So where it's going to come from, um, or is it going to be, because it can be uh, coming from an external source or you are going to create it. And once you have the design ready, you know, how to architect or, sorry, uh, do the site creation, right? Sorry, not site creation, site building. The, 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 the content type, the paragraphs, the fields, the, 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 the view modes and the views and whatnot. So uh, it is easier once you have visualized what the, um, uh, what the communications team wants rather than directly getting into that's not possible we have no capacity for doing it. We have basically, using this method, separated out the initial friction. The initial friction is, I don't want to sit down with you and, and uh, you know, go through the details. We, uh, since our team does not do UI UX designing, uh, we, we have a vendor uh, who, who supports us. And in organizations, as you know, funds have to be channeled. Uh, from one one um, uh, one budget code to another budget code and so on, so we can't charge internally, right? So, but you can channel it to vendors. So having a vendor to do to 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 remove this friction of what they actually want makes things easier for us. And that was that was the reason I personally wanted to increase the scope of this project. But um, Great question. That's the, it's the problem of any content management system delivering public website content, yes. Uh, sorry, to add to that, there is also the approval process. The approval process of content. Now, IT is, should not be responsible for what goes on the site. That should be the communications team, right? But since you are the custodian of the, of the, of the system, what happens is you are seen as the person responsible for it. Yeah, I was working for the agency uh, with with a lot of nuclear related content uh, being published or stories and so on. I always told my um, internal clients, one of them sitting here as well, uh, from the past, um, this is all lorem ipsum to me. You know, tell me the font, tell me the size, tell me the uh, what elements you want content, you fill in. Yeah. I hope I answered your question. Hi, Pavan. Great talk. Um, 
I'm not sure everybody here knows what the agency means. It sounds like the CIA. Yeah. <laughs> not the CIA. Not the CIA. It's the uh, IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency. Thanks. My question concerned about halfway through your talk, you talked about, I think it was chapter four, if I remembered correctly, uh, the last bullet, technical debt. And yeah. I think on the previous slide, you said the old code base just couldn't be um, rescued in any way or form. You were going to have to start fresh. Yeah. And so you built everything new. So why is it the case that there's any text, you know, technical debt at launch if it's brand new code? I mean, technical debt certainly acquires. Yes. But on the first release, there should be incomplete features, but no technical debt. No, no, no. I was talking about the old. Yeah, but look at your chapter four. Now one more. One more. Right. Reduced, but still ongoing. But when you're released, I mean, technical debt's always a problem, right? But it starts from the moment you go live. Um, no. Um, Maybe I misunderstood. It's still, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, technical debt is reduced. We still have not removed certain integrations that are causing friction. Yeah. It's, it's not so much the code base, but uh, it's the integrations to, for example, uh, SAP systems, uh, vacancy notices. Yeah. We had to still go and, and continue using the, 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 the monolithic system that we had, or rather hard-coded things and so on. But for example, we were using APIs to access the documents from our document management system which was uh, creating a huge load on the back end of the, the, um, of the live link document management system that we had. We cut it off. We said these are publicly accessible documents. There can easily be an export of the documents that are linked directly. And of course, the import was, for example, done using um, custom code. Uh, we simplified the process and used a very standard feeds module that's, uh, that's available. So. Yeah, that's, sorry, uh, I, I, I was trying to summarize it at the last minute, um, and probably, yes. Sorry. Um, yep. I still have seven more minutes. I'm trying to get my l local Docker system up and running, but I can't do that. Never do live demos, especially if you haven't planned for them. Um, but hey, why don't we try? So I'm all ears for more questions, if there are any. But let me. Thanks for your talk, Palan. It was great. Uh, one question I was asking myself for quite some time is, why did you go for the Radix space theme on, on the redesign and not use uh, something else as a Bootstrap 5 theme? Um, well, that was because of Bootstrap 5. Uh, the, the Radix theme at, uh, at the time was one of the few choices that we had because it was based on um, on, on Bootstrap 5, and the, the design vendor, uh, we had also asked him to start doing some of the storybook integration, and we had to pick some, pick one. So we, we yeah, there wasn't any uh, specific reason for going for, for, the, unit, uh, for the Radix theme, um, but we also looked at their history. Uh, they, they, they seem to, to be quite well maintained. Um, and yeah, I haven't had any problems. I have things, uh, so NVM use, and let me see, NPM run storybook. It's been a while since I fired this up, but it should, it should work. Why are you not live? Pop, pop. Okay, yeah, all right, let me 
see if localhost 6007 works. Sorry, it's a, it's a very cold start. But I, I just wanted to touch up on the uh, first question again. Um, oh, man, this is a bit difficult, so <laughs> I don't know which component I'm uh, clicking on right now. But yeah, basically, uh, most of us have seen the, the, the storybook demo and uh, uh, the, the, the samples. Um, but um, sorry, uh, the first question that you asked, this is, this is the way we, we try and uh, simplify it. We, we break it down. We try to make it as um, atomic as possible and then bring it all together. Uh, and of course, uh, once things are ready, it's easy for us to, to, to create the backend. Um, uh, sorry, to do the site building part of things. Yeah, of course, it gets more and more complicated uh, from atoms, molecules, to organisms, and then pages. Sorry, I, I really can't see what's going on. Um, and then if you... If we quickly go to www.org, and of course I don't have internet here, uh, but maybe I just fire off the local host. Why not? I wasn't planning on this, uh, by the way, so excuse me if it doesn't work. Yep, like I said, the patience of a Zen master. <laughs> Let me try to... Nope, doesn't like it. Yeah, not bad. Okay. Because there's no internet, I'm not able to get uh, the video from, uh, from Vimeo. But like you saw on the, on the components listing, we, we basically then integrated, you know, almost without any, any issues. So it's, it's, it's easy for us to, 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 <clears throat> to build the system, the backend system. Right. Guess I'm just about in time. If there are no more questions, I thank you all for your patience. And yeah. <laughs>